الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ربي زدني علما فقال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وتعاونوا على البر والتقوى ولا تعاونوا على الإثم والعدوان صدق الله العظيم The piece of an ayah that I have recited to you is not even a complete ayah, it's a portion of an ayah in which there are a lot of words. If we start looking at each of those words, it's going to require us probably months to just explain each of each one of those words. So I'm going to give you a translation and then we're going to pick one of the words that is being used in this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this ayah, cooperate, ta'awanu, cooperate with each other. Alan birri wa taqwa. In the matters of righteousness and piety. Do not cooperate with each other in the matters of sin and transgression. So things that will force you to leave the bounds of your faith, Things that are considered as sins in the faith, do not cooperate with each other in those things. Rather cooperate with each other in building a positive environment, an environment of righteousness, an environment that will promote piety. Now if you look around us, if we look in our own lives, how often do we cooperate with each other in righteousness? How often do we cooperate with each other in piety? And if somebody tries to cooperate with us, that let's do this good thing, do we say labaik? Do we go towards it? Or do we just leave it and say, okay, I'll think about it. However, on the other hand, if it's a matter of sin, we cooperate. We join hands. We carpool. And we try to get to that destination. And that's our ultimate desire. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is setting a very good rule here to cooperate. Now the word that I want to pick over here is cooperate. And I'll talk a little bit about this word cooperate. It's a word from English language. So I opened the dictionary and I said, okay, let's see what English says about the word cooperate. So the English language says the word cooperate means to work or act Willingly to work or act. That's why I'm slowing it down. Willingly and jointly towards a common goal or task. So it's very important when you are cooperating, you have to first will for it. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set a foundation rule for all of our tasks. That if you are doing a task, which is called an amal, the first thing that you have to purify is your intention. If your intention is pure, then your act is accepted. If your intention is pure, your thought is also written out as a good act. You just thought about doing good, it is written out as a good act. Because your intention was pure. So when you cooperate, you work together. Now what does that mean to work together? To work together means do not leave the other person alone. That's another meaning of cooperate. Do not leave the other person alone. Now if somebody is sinning around us, it is our responsibility to first stop ourselves from that sin and on top of that, however we can, cooperate with that individual to get away from that sin. If somebody is doing a good deed around us, we should learn from that and try to incorporate that good deed in us. So we are cooperating with that individual in good deed by following in the good footsteps. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not leave us alone. Always, always cooperated with us. It is we who decide not to cooperate. So when Adam alayhi salam forgot about something in the heavens and ate from that fruit and he was asked to leave, 
What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did? Leave him because he was asked to leave? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a special revelation that seek my forgiveness using these words and I'll forgive you. Because his intention was pure. He forgot about it. فَنَسِيَ Adam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Adam forgot about that act, that pact that happened between me and him because he was overwhelmed with love. Because when shaitan approached Adam and his wife, فَقَسَمَهُمَا إِنِّي لَكُمَا مِنَ النَّاصِحِينَ He said, by God. What did he say? By God. I am telling you the truth. He used the word by God, so he put the most beloved entity in statement to Adam alayhi salam, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Adam didn't know that there is something called lying. He trusted the guy. He said, you are telling me by the one I love the most, yes, you must be telling the truth. He said, yes, if you eat from this tree, you will live here forever. And you will be with your Lord forever. So he was overwhelmed with love. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Nasiya Adam. Adam forgot about it. Didn't say Adam made a mistake. But still, because Adam was a prophet, and he was at a higher level of piety than us, that forgetfulness to him was something that he must ask forgiveness for, because a ni'mah, a blessing was taken away. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped him and revealed to him the words by which he must seek the forgiveness. And then on top of that, when he was asked to come to the planet earth, another statement was made very clear. And when the guidance come to you from me, O oh, you all, humans and jinn, you must take it. And the one who takes that guidance, there's nothing for that individual to worry about. In this life or hereafter. And then on top of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started a constant sending of the prophets and messengers. Sometimes the prophets would come to enforce the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which was already in existence. Sometimes the messengers will come with new books, new rulings, an improvement as reformist to bring change in the lives of individual. So when Nuh alayhi salam came to his people, he said, Ya qawm, O my people. So look at this word, Ya qawm, O my people. There's this owning, this community, that I have been sent to from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the job of each and every individual who lives in a community, irrespective of faith, must stand with good and must not stand with evil. Must promote good, must not promote evil. As an individual and as a believer, this responsibility exponentially increases. That is why we have to be more obliged and more concerned because we have a higher responsibility because we said, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. We bear witness that there is no God to be worshipped but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is the final messenger then how is it possible that the person who makes this claim left and right, doesn't follow the rules given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How is it possible? That's why the responsibility increases. So we as individuals need to read and understand and learn our responsibilities on ourselves and back to the communities that we live in. So when Nuh alayhi salam went to his people, what did he say? Ya qawmi, inni lakum I have come to you as an open warner. So I'll tell you the good from bad. If you follow it, if you follow the good, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a reward for you here and in the life hereafter. But if you don't, you may be able to enjoy some goodness in this world, but the end is not good. The life hereafter, which is eternal, is not good. So, So worship only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be God conscious and do what? And then follow, <coughs> obey. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about many messengers after that. That towards the people of Aad, we send Hud alayhi salam. Towards the people of Thamud, we send Salih alayhi salam. Towards the people of Madian, we send Shu'ayb alayhi salam. With one common message. Ya qawm, O oh my people. O oh my people. A'budullaha ma lakum min ilahin ghayruh. There is only one God to be worshipped. And there is nobody to be worshipped. Now what is worship? What is worship? What is act of worship? Have you ever paid attention to it? Look at the five pillars of Islam. Except for Shahada, the remaining four pillars promote community. As in men, what is afdal? What is better? To come and pray in a jama'ah or to pray individually? Jama'ah. What is the purpose of Jum'ah? Jum'ah. The yawm, the day when people jama'ah, form a group, intermingle with each other, that gives you strength, that gives you wisdom, that gives you the sense that I am not alone, that help you discuss the problems, that help you overcome the obstacles, that give you a sense there are other people like me. I'm not living in this boat alone. That's why if you go to major universities and colleges, they have MSAs, Muslim Student Associations. Why? Because it brings all the Muslims on a common platform so that they can form this support group for each other. Support group for each other. That's very important to strive and survive. Because ta'awanu alal birri wa taqwa. They help each other out. Let me give you another example that we have implemented at our school. Then when we notice that these first semester and second stu semester students are struggling, and some of the programs are struggling with retention rate, we started a lab, an open lab. In that open lab, we put advanced students as tutors and lab aides. So what happened with these first, second semester students going these labs, they get stuck on problems. Instead of getting frustrated and asking each other, they have somebody who has already gone through the process to ask to, who can help them. And then at the same time, motivate them, hold them, not drop from the course. As a result, a big cooperation environment was created. As a result, the retention rates, rates went up. So it doesn't matter, even if you go to work, Think about it, if there was only one Muslim in 100 people, when it's time to pray Zuhar, you're like, I don't know, I'm going to look, praying by myself. But if there are like 10 of you, you can go to HR and say there are 10 of us, it's time to pray Zuhar. Can we borrow one of the conference rooms that are open for 10 minutes? It becomes easier, because now you're a group. So, even in daily life, even at workplace, you're going to think twice doing something like, my brother is watching me, man. What kind of impression am I giving to my brother? <laughs> now this itself is a very low level statement. The higher level statement should be, my Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching me, doesn't matter who else watches me or not, I shouldn't be doing this. That's a higher level statement. But I'm giving you a lower, lower level statement because everybody is at a different state. So this cooperation helps. In the times we live in, cooperation has become far easier because of social media. We are all very connected with each other. We have Facebook profiles, we have LinkedIn profiles. For those of you who are in a professional network, you must have a LinkedIn profile to get connected with the people in the network. It's like Facebook, but professionally, and you grow together. You're aware of each other's achievements and you can connect with each other. Any of you who are college-going kids, 
You must have a LinkedIn profile and start connecting with your faculty member. Start connecting with the seniors in your programs so when they graduate, you already have links in industry. You already have links in industry. When you go out and you reach the point of graduation, there are hundreds of people out there to help you out get placed. So this professional network also applies at the community level. So this connectedness is very important. It's very important to be connected with each other. Now, for example, it's my dire wish that in every masjid, they must be connected to all the masjids around them. There should be a connection. What I have noticed, which makes me cry, is that every time a little masjid is formed, in some cases, that was a breakout from the other masjid. And there's a total disconnect. And then another breakout, total disconnect. Another breakout. So they're like little pockets of disconnected people with hearts impure. And they stand on the member of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And how can I promote goodness when my heart is not good? And then on top of that, within a masjid, there must be tears, tears, levels of connectedness. The middle schoolers should be the level that elementary school kids should be, uh, go, be able to go to and say, how, she, how can I excel, not only survive, excel in the elementary school system. And the middle school kids can look up to the high school kids who can tell them how to survive and excel in the middle school system. And the college going kids should be able to tell the high school kids, how can you excel? In high school, if you want to go into these good schools. And the people already in the college should prepare these fresh graduates. How can you survive college? Because we have seen these beautiful minds coming out of high school into college system, but they don't know how to survive college. To some of them, deadline doesn't make sense. When you say it's due by the end of the week, they're like, still in high school. Oh, I could still turn it in by week 15. No, you can't. You can't do that. This is college. Higher education for a reason. So these are the things. And then when you go up in the professional work, there must be people to pull you in industry and help you excel. This is the community. This is the community that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about وَتَعَوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم